It's the weekend, it's time to play with LEDs and stuff and drink ginger beer and rum, uh, alias uh, Dark and Stormy, and perhaps nibble one of these Oreo Thins. Uh, Oreos were mentioned in a recent video, um, and I just thought, are these common around the world? They're super thin Oreo biscuits. Mm. All the taste of Oreo, but really, really small. I shall put that to the side so I don't end up making loud masticating noises during the video. They still managed to jam in their 40% uh, 40% fat, oh no, 40% sugar, 20% fat, which uh, just makes them so addictive. Also, there's a trend here. All the biscuits are available in these super wafer-thin varieties, and you think, I suppose that would help cut down your consumption of them, except they're so much easier to eat, and therefore you eat more of them, so it's not that good. <laughs> Tasty as they are. Uh, anyway, onto this particular wafer-thin biscuit, which is actually an LED cob with a really thick aluminium base. Uh, why are these so cheap? They're £1.66. They're sold uh, by lots of sellers. And the keywords here ignore the 12 to 24 volt bit, by the way. it's I don't, I don't know where that comes from. The keywords are 1000 lumen, actually 1000 LM, 10 watt. LED strip. We'll find lots of these. If you search on the Canadian uh, eBay, you'll also find them at much lower price, like £1.35. I bought this one for $1.66. It's fine. eBay is awash with them. It just seems to be the current thing. And are they rejects? Why are they so cheap? Because uh, I was expecting, because of the cost, to basically dim this up very slowly and see lots of LEDs, sort of mottled effect as the LEDs were defective, but they're all very consistent. The one oddity is if you nudge it up from zero volts, well, as soon as you get to just under nine volts when they start glowing in the dark, this row here is just that tiny little bit less efficient. It's that tiny bit dimmer at those currents, but the other ones are the same brightness, and that suggests the machine that's feeding them on, I would guess that this is from a batch and this is from a separate batch, so it's like four containers of these chips. I was going to say reels, but how do they actually even store these? Because these are the bare chips that are basically bonded onto the board and then the little gold wires attached. Now, you'll notice that there are about 28 uh, in the row, but four wide. And the LEDs are in series. You've got four LEDs in series and there's no current limiting. As you turn the voltage up, you basically hit, in this case, you hit about nine volts. It's uh, just nudging up in 10 volts here. But the current is only a couple of milliamps. It's not even registering this meter yet. And if I turn the voltage up, then when you get up to about, um, well, we'll monitor here, 10 volts, uh, 10.1 is roughly showing on my meter up here as well as down here, it's showing about 10 milliamps. It's actually quite a, a modest amount of light coming off. It's not a huge amount of light, but it's very useful nonetheless. <clears throat> as you nudge the voltage up, uh, to get to 100 milliamps, I would say that if you wanted this for ambient lighting, I'm just trying to get a nice round 100 milliamps. I'm not getting 100 milliamps here because the meter increments and in chunks. But uh, here we go, about 10.5 volts, you're at the 100 milliamps, and that is equivalent to about one watt of dissipation from this. As you turn it up to, let's go all the way to 12 then. And it's getting really bright now. So this is at 12 volts, it's drawing an amp, that's 12 watts. What do they rate this at? They rate it at 10 watts, so it's already a bit excessive at that. And if you consider, if you were using this in an automotive application, oh, let's try that. Hold on. I'm going to just nudge it. I'm going to bump it and see what the current is. Uh, I'm going to turn it off for a start. I'm going to turn the voltage up to 13.8 volts. Um, it'll probably, there'll be a voltage drop along the leads. Let's give it a quick bump and see what the current goes up to. That's uh, 13 volts, it's 2 amps. Let's uh, go a bit higher. Still at 13 volts, 2 amps, it's really drawing, it's increasingly uh, drawing a lot more current now. If I get, if I get current limiting on here, Oh, it is. It's current limiting on this. I'm a bit scared to run it any higher. I think if you put this on a vehicle and the voltage went up to about 14 volts, it would really be passing a lot of current through these. Um, I really should, shouldn't I? All right, OK, go on then. Let's uh, pump this up to about 3 amps. And uh, the limit in this. It's going to be more than 3 amps. I just know this. Uh, 
and let's turn it on and see what happens. 13.7, it's yeah, 3 amps at 13.7 and it's current limiting again. Basic speaking, because these are LEDs, these LEDs are all just in series with no current limiting. As soon as you reach around about this 3 volt mark, at, mark the, uh, the current just explodes through the roof, it really goes high. So if you are actually using these on a car, I would recommend aiming for about half an amp. And to do that, let's say I turn the voltage down here. Let's say I turn it way down. Ramp it up to about half an amp. So that's about 11.2 volts. So if you're running it on a car, say about... Uh, Say you were aiming for a voltage, a charging voltage from the alternator of about, say, 14 volts peak, minus the uh, drop across the LEDs, 11.2. You want to drop about, say, 3 volts across the uh, resistor at about half an amp. So uh, that would be, say, 3 volts, uh, R equals V over I, divided by the 0.5 equals... You'd want roughly a 5 or 6 ohm resistor, depending on how bright you wanted it. You could use resistors to, a switch with resistors to actually vary the intensity of this. What I'm thinking about here is people with camper vans and things like that, or vehicles, where they want a nice bright light source in the back that isn't going to really drain the battery too much. I'm kind of, I'm thinking now, I'm looking at this and thinking, what would happen if I, I'll turn this down because it has swum the camera out a bit. <clears throat> what would happen if I physically chopped this because I know that it seems to have bus bars going along from one end to the other. Oh, here's another thing. This has a really thick aluminium plate. I mean, it really is impressively thick. It's not like the uh, typical high power LEDs. I'm looking for one up here. I'm not finding one. Yeah, here's, here's one. With sort of wafer thin plates in the back. Really not impressive. This one has that thick aluminium plate with the fiberglass laminate bonded onto the front and then the LEDs placed on it. And when I was soldering this, I really, I couldn't get the temperature up high enough. And I had to think of back to when uh, Mike's Electric stuff suggested, put it on an iron. <coughs> now, what he suggested was getting a standard household iron and a vice and clamping it in the vice. I'm pretty sure it was Mike who suggested that. And then place the, uh, the module on top of it and bring it up to temperature. Uh, just adjust the temperature accordingly. I did that, it made it very easy to solder. I brought it up, that 100 degrees Celsius made a huge difference. I didn't want to take it up too much higher. I suppose you could, these are fairly resilient, but um, uh, that made a huge difference. It made it very easy to solder onto it. So that's actually a really good tip. Plant an iron in a vise just pointing up the way and just bring the temperature of the whole substrate up and it just makes it easier to solder. Now, I'm gonna go, go and get a guillotine and I'm gonna physically chop this LED in half. A guillotine. I'm going to turn the LED off while I do this. Let's see if we can cut this LED down to about here and just chop it. Okay. Yes, you can cut the LED down to size if you wish. That's quite useful to know. Before anybody asks about the guillotine, it's my printed circuit board laminate guillotine. Very good, but it is firmly in the category of professional gear. It was bought from a UK supplier called Mega Electronics and wasn't cheap to say the least. Uh, but it's like worth its weight in gold for cutting laminates. It produces such a clean edge in them. So you can uh, cut these down to size and then use the bits if you want. I mean, I don't know if there's any great use to doing that unless you wanted it to fix in a specific area. And then you'd have to adjust the uh, current down accordingly. Another thing you could do with these is uh, these little power supplies uh, that put out, they're designed for driving, say, a 3-watt LED or whatever, and they put out up to 12 volts at 300 milliamps. This would drive this. One moment, please. Same setup as before, but connected to this little dinky inline power supply, noting that isolation from these isn't always guaranteed. They're supposed to be isolated usually, but just always treat them as being live. The output is being live anyway. It's just safer than, you know, just, yeah, it is just safer. Uh, so I'm going to close the cliff quick test here. And we're getting about, the voltage isn't reaching the full 12 volts uh, and the current isn't reaching the 300. I think it must just be pushing this a little bit to the point that it's just self-regulating the voltage. But it's still, uh, well, let's do the maths. 
it's still putting out 11 volts, 11.14 uh, times 0.26 amps equals, it's still putting out the best part of 3 watts. So uh, that's not too bad. Again, with uh, this uh, more, all the LED, if you had the rest of the LEDs connected to this, it would just, uh, it would also light those as well. So you might actually get a bit more light out of it that way. But uh, yeah, it's an interesting little module. It's a very interesting little module indeed. It's cheap enough that, you know, for vehicle lighting or camper van lighting or mobile home lighting, it actually has its uses. I wonder how long it would last. Again, I suppose that's ultimately down to how well you heat sink. It's, it doesn't generate a lot of heat if you run it at a modest current. Uh, and the fact that LEDs are all spread out, and even if you do lose one or two rows, it still doesn't really matter. So it could be quite useful as just a general little lighting module.